let's create a new hydraulic model. We will track changes. We're going to save this model. Name it Pipes and Junctions. For this workshop, we have two shape files named Junctions and Pipes, and we're going to use those to build our model. So we're going to go to Tools, Model Builder. This is the tool that helps us bring in external data to build our models. And we're going to create a new connection. We're going to select Shape Files. Browse to the location of those files and select them. You can show a preview to see what data is in those shape files. So for junctions, we have elevations and labels. And for pipes, we have diameter, roughness coefficient, label, length, material, and start and stop information. Click Next. Leave the units as feet and leave all the other defaults. On the second screen, click Next. Third screen, click Next. And here's where we're going to map those fields. So for junctions, we'll bring them in as junctions, use label as the key field, and we'll map the elevation in feet. And for pipes, we'll bring them in as pipes, use the label as a key field, start node and stop node, D is the diameter in inches. User L is has user defined length. C is the Hayes and Williams C coefficient. L is length user defined and in feet. And finally, we'll map the material. So when you're done, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you can see. This is what your mapping should look like. Okay, click Next. We're not going to use snapshots, so I'll click Next. And would you like to build a model now? Go ahead and say yes. And yes to the synchronization. When you're done, you will have imported 14 junctions, a missing node will be created, 17 pipes imported. Here you can see that J10 was created at the end of P1. Close this and synchronize our drawing. And this is what it should look like. Notice that this is J10, the missing node that was created. We'll verify that the pipe data was imported correctly, so double click on any pipe. Check that diameter, material, Hayes and Williams coefficient, and length were imported. So do that for a few pipes. And notice that all that data has come through. Notice the imported elevation data. We can see that on the flex tables for junction. You can sort this. And notice that J10 does not have elevation since it was created by Model Builder. And the other nodes range between 770 and 950. We are going to correct that node, J10. Go to Layout. Select Reservoir and place it right on top of J10. When you're asked to morph, go ahead and say yes. Now you'll notice that this is a reservoir. Make sure the label is R1 and enter 950 feet for reservoir elevation. Now we need to enter the demands, go to Components, Demand Center, Demand Control Center, click Yes to continue. 
and go to new initialize demands for all elements. We're going to sort the labels ascending and then we'll enter the data on the table. Check that you've entered all the numbers correctly and when you're done click close. Now we're ready to validate the model. If no problems were found, click Compute. And notice that all the demands add up to 430 gallons per minute, but we do have a warning to say that negative pressures are found in the system. So we're going to take a look at that. Move up a little bit so we can see. Um, we can take a look at the junction flex table and see the pressure. So notice that it goes between 76. We have two junctions, 11 and 12, that have minus 2 and 2. Uh, junction 11 is this one right here. And junction 12, if you can go to Select and Drawing, or you can go to Zoom 2, and navigate to those two. So J11 has 2 PSI pressure, and J12 has minus 2. Notice that the reservoir elevation was 950, and J12 has the same elevation. So if you take into account the head loss between the reservoir and J12, that's what's happening. Uh, also, J11 has 945. So really uh, very close to that level of the reservoir. Okay, let's close that. And the second question is, what could we do to improve the pressure in this system? Well, one thing we could do uh, would be to put a pump right after the reservoir to increase the pressure, or we could put an elevated storage tank somewhere in the system, uh, something that would increase and maintain higher pressures in our system. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.